Uh, it is time for questions to the Office of the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. We will start with 15 minutes of topical questions, and I call Mr Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, would the Deputy First Minister outline the crisis within the Office of First and Deputy First Minister, which his party has spoken of in the media? Well, uh, I have been interviewed several times since I came back from the United States and I have uh, outlined uh, my view that there are quite severe difficulties in relation to the events of recent times, uh, not least the events over the course of the last uh, year, uh, which has seen uh, violence on the streets, perpetrated in the main by elements within uh, loyalism. And I've been on the public record as saying that it is my view that the uh, activities of elements of the Orange Order, of the PUP and the UVF in North Belfast are indistinguishable. And I certainly think that that represents a real challenge to these institutions. It's not the first time that these institutions have been challenged. We saw the killings of two soldiers at Antrim, the killing of Constable Stephen Carroll and Ronan Kerr, and prison officer David Black. And I made some of the most forthright statements ever made by any Republican leader in condemnation of those activities, effectively stood up against those who would try to plunge us back to the past. So I do think serious questions have to be asked about the response of uh, uh, unionist leaders to the activities on the streets, particularly the incident where 56 police officers were uh, injured in a full-scale riot in Belfast city centre. I find that very, very disturbing. I find it particularly disturbing in the context of what appears to be a common view within many within unionism, that particularly in East Belfast, uh, the UVF are up to their necks in criminality and violence. And I am particularly disturbed by the shooting just a few days ago of 24-year-old Gemma McGrath. And I think all of you know what I'm talking about. And all of you know the allegations that are flying around the place, right, left and centre. And I ask the question, if Republicans were involved in that sort of activity, we wouldn't have the same silence that we have from some of the benches in this assembly. Remind the Minister of the two-minute rule. The, the other aspect of it is the aspect of the uh, decision to pull the plug on the peace building conflict at Resolution Centre, which I think is directly related to some of the activities that are happening on the street, and that deeply saddens me. I call Mr Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. May I thank the Deputy First Minister for his answer. He seems to cast all the blame on one side, but many would see this as simply competitive posturing between Sinn Féin and the DUP, and it really does Northern Ireland no favours whatsoever, or this Assembly. Well, I, I am not uh, one who uh, is inclined to posture. Uh, in fact, I, I think I have made my own particular contribution towards the stability of these institutions through some of the most testing and difficult times that these institutions have seen. So in reality, for me, it's about the commitment of all of us to stand by the agreements that we've made. It's a, about the commitment of all of us to face down violent extremists, whether they be so-called dissident Republicans or extreme loyalists. That's a test. That's a test for this assembly, and that's a test for this executive. And I think that thus far, you know, serious questions have to be asked about the commitment to stand by the PSNA, particularly in the context of some of the comments that were made today by the PSNA chief constable about his dismay at the failure of politics to support the police. Mr. Alec Maskey. Uh, Could I ask the uh, Deputy First Minister, given the uh, recent 
withdrawal of support for the peace building and conflict resolution centre by the DUP. Can the Deputy First Minister give the Assembly uh, any update on the uh, developments at the Mays Lawn Care site? Well, uh, I think as everybody knows, the peace building and conflict uh, resolution centre is a programme for government commitment, and we have received a letter of offer of £18 million from the European Union to complete the project. The withdrawal of support from the project by our partners in government is deeply disappointing. The combined efforts of the Ulster Unionist Party, supported by extreme loyalists, in mounting a campaign against the peace building and conflict resolution centre were deplorable. The inability to honour a programme for government commitment has created very significant difficulties for me as Deputy First Minister. The Peace Building and Conflict Resolution Centre always wanted to be a shrine to peace and a symbol of a new future where space is opened up for dialogue and true reconciliation between our people. It was the jewel in the crown of the Maze Log Cash site and would undoubtedly be a tourist mecca. And the EU had earmarked the site as their centre of excellence for conflict resolution and peace building activities. And it saddens me that agreements that have been made have not been honoured and the extremes of unionism have shifted the direction of the DUP. In this context, it is essential that we find remedies to the problem that we face. We have to find a way to honour the agreements that have been made. And I'm also conscious that the Peace Building Conflict Resolution Centre is also part of a wider agreement. Royal Ulster Agriculture Society moved on to that site last year very successful show, and I intend to honour the courageous lead given by the RUS in recognising the incredible potential of the site. In September of last year, we set up the MLK Development Corporation to oversee investment on the site. So the decision to withdraw support to build the Peace Building Conflict Resolution Centre, as agreed, has now jeopardised the future of the site as a whole. And I am also very content that the RUS continues next year on the basis that it took place this year. However, the anticipated development of the site can only proceed on the basis of the honouring of the commitments that have been made. The role of the Development Corporation and the Board have been undermined and called into question, and no further further development will take place until this is satisfactorily resolved. If we obey the standing orders, and the business committee's uh, guidance in this, then we'll give as many people an opportunity to contribute as possible. So two minutes for the, uh, the ministers to respond. And the questions, the supplementaries, have to be questions because the previous one wasn't. Uh, again. Uh, to thank the Deputy First Minister for his uh, very frank uh, response. Could I ask the, the Deputy First Minister, could he clarify what he would mean by uh, the issue being satisfactorily resolved? Well, as I said in my initial answer, there is a, a very clear commitment in the programme for government to build the peace building and conflict uh, resolution centre. And uh, Daniel Liebskin, uh, a world renowned architect, has been over here on countless occasions uh, working with those people who had the responsibility to put the design in place. Uh, Daniel Liebskin is someone who has experience of uh, difficulties around some of his buildings, particularly the construction of the new Jewish uh, Memorial Museum in Berlin. And I think that uh, from my perspective, and recognising the importance of this site strategically for the employment prospects of our people, uh, and also the fact that it represents probably the the prime area of uh, potential real estate in the whole of Western Europe. I think there's a huge responsibility on all of us to ensure that the commitments that were made uh, initially are honoured and that the Peace Building Conflict Resolution Centre is built on that site for the benefit of all of our people. Mr Sean Rogers. Thank you, Mr President, Deputy Speaker. Thanks to the Deputy First Minister for his answers thus far. In my question to the First Minister last week on the undocumented he, he said that it was really up to the Irish government to, to look after Irish passport holders. But as we all know, many p- people in, in the North exercise dual citizenship and undocumented are from both communities. What representations has he made to the senior American figures on their behalf? Well, I think this is an issue that 
obviously SDLP members and Sinn Féin members in particular have been exercised about given that uh, I suppose many people are being lobbied on a consistent basis by families who uh, on occasions have very difficult family circumstances as a result of the inability of people who are regarded as undocumented to travel uh, back home for things like funerals and weddings and baptism and so forth. Uh, and even for all Ireland hurling and Gaelic football finals, which is very close to the heart of many in Irish America. Every time I go to the United States, I contribute to that debate. I speak to people in Capitol Hill. And uh, I think that I'm, I'm very encouraged by the uh, recent division, uh, decision by the, se the Senate uh, to, to effectively propel the debate forward now into the House of Representatives. Uh, and I hope that uh, there will be an outcome uh, from that which will satisfactorily deal with the plight of many who are undocumented because quite clearly they come from right across the community. And I think that uh, we, we do have a duty and a responsibility to try and alleviate hardship wherever it exists, particularly in the context of how it affects our own people. Thank you, Minister. Um, and I welcome also the, the bipartisan approach of the Republicans and the Democrats in, 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 in America. Can the Minister reassure assure me that they make representations at the highest level in the House of Representatives to ensure that this, this is brought to a vote as soon as possible? Yeah, well, it, I mean, it has been raised consistently and will continue to be raised. I think all of us are very conscious that whenever we talk about the undocumented Irish, the resolution of that issue isn't just about how you resolve the difficulties relating to the island of Ireland, north or south. Uh, you know, th this is about many people, many millions more people who come from different ethnic groups in particularly Central and South America. So it's a huge issue. And uh, I certainly hope that the deliberations that are taking place at the minute on Capitol Hill can lead to a resolution which will see uh, the difficulties presented uh, for people resolved. I mean, on, on my last visit to the United States, I actually ran accidentally into a man who had been undocumented for the last uh, 12 years. He's employing 100 people in the United States of America. That, that's the scale of what we're dealing with. These people are actually contributing uh, to society and contributing to providing employment for many others within uh, society. So I, I do think that there is a desperate need to resolve their plight as quickly as possible. I call Mr. Jim Allister. The Deputy First Minister was recently in Warrington. Apart from the pious platitudes has the Deputy First Minister at any time, from his inside knowledge, from his position of leadership in the Republican movement, done anything to help the police catch the child killers of Warrington or the Birmingham bombers, which are mentioned in that context, or indeed any other crime such as that? Well, I was very pleased and delighted to go to Warrington at the invitation of Colin and uh, Wendy Parry, uh, two people that I have known for the last uh, 10 or 11 years, people who I think have made an enormous contribution to the peace process. I think they have been asked similar questions to the questions that have been posed to me today, and they have answered them in their own particular way, particularly stressing on every occasion that all they want to do is contribute to the ongoing success of the peace process. I don't have any personal knowledge whatsoever about the individuals who were involved in either the uh, events in Warrington or the events in uh, Birmingham. But obviously that brings us into a, a big debate about how we deal about the past. And of course, that responsibility has been given now to Richard Haas, uh, who will be deliberating on these matters in conjunction with the panel of parties over the course of the next couple of months. And I hope that there will be a resolution to that. Uh, I think also that uh, it's quite a regular occurrence for the member to portray himself as a, a paragon 
of uh, virtue and uh, non-conflict and non-violence. But uh, quite interesting to see him standing with leading members of the UVF at a, a recent demonstration in North Belfast, and not in a bit shamefaced about it. And that ends the period for topical questions. We will now move on to oral questions.